with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So excuse my voice, it's fucking cooked today. I don't know what the fuck's going on with it. It's deep, it's croaky, it's sexy. I would trade this voice out for my normal voice, to be honest with you. What did you say, cunt? It's ominous, isn't it? What did you fucking say? So today I fucking did something that I've been putting off for a couple of years now. I did my taxes. I've been fucking avoiding it ever since I've become a sole trader, a business, ever since comedy and podcasting became my number one source of income. I haven't (laughs) lodged a tax return I've just been like, I can't deal with that. I would rather just get arrested, thrown into jail. I can't fill out forms. I can't do anything. I didn't get my driver's license till I was like 31 because I didn't want to fill out a fucking form. I can avoid it forever. I don't give a fuck. But it came to a head as these things tend to. And I had till June 30th or shit was going to get real So I got a fucking contact of my mate Georgie, the cunt that won the film festival last year or the year before, whenever the fuck it was, for mate. I think it's available now, but I think it's only available in Australia. Anyway, Georgie recommended me to this accountant who specializes in fucking entertainment accounting for entertainers, which I guess (laughs) I am. And I called him yesterday and I'm like, mate, fucking I need help I need some big fucking help he's like all right come in tomorrow fill out a couple of these forms I'll send them through just do the forms and we'll fucking sort it out tomorrow so I get online and this form's like 30 pages long so I'm like no I'm not filling out the form I just went through and ticked some boxes put no other information in there I'm like that's gonna have to do I'll fucking just explain to him I'm a retard when I get there. So I get there and the cunt's just on the ball. Just fucking amazing. He's pulled up two old tax returns that I didn't lodge. He's like, you'll be getting some money back for this. And then we worked on this year's tax. And I had no (laughs) paperwork, no nothing. I was just like, listen. I'm just going to take a stab in the dark with most of this, okay? (coughs) And he's like, it doesn't really matter that much because there's this thing if you're a fucking entertainer or someone that fucking in the arts where your income for the first year you actually make some money can be averaged out over the previous three or four years. So he's like, unless you earn a shitload of money, which I didn't, You're going to be all right. You're not going to pay much tax. So we went through it and I was expecting I was going to owe like maybe three to five thousand dollars in tax. Fucking the master accountant pops it out. Nine hundred dollars. That's all I owed. I was like fucking ka-ching win. And then as we were finalizing everything. So he lodged two tax returns from fucking like 2011, 2012 or something that I hadn't done and he lodged this year's one and this year's bill was coming to like $900 but I was getting back like $300 for the previous tax returns so I was going to knock it down to like $600 and just as I was leaving, he looked through my fucking history and he's like, you've got like three more tax returns from like 2007. 2008 2009 that you haven't done as well do you want to do those i'm like i might as well he's like you're gonna get some money back you might as well do it and if they find out you haven't done it they can find the fuck out of you so i'm like yeah fucking do it and he did the tax returns and it turns out once all said and done the boy al owes zero dollars fucking win he did six tax returns for me today that's how messy my life was. <laughs> I'm like, I can't be fucked doing a tax return. Not that my earnings were very big in 2008. 
In 2008, the Boyal earned a grand total of $1,800. Big year for the Boyal. Big year. And if you look at my passport for that year, pretty full. (laughs) Oh, my life was a mess back then. Anyway, it's fucking, it's good to have that shit done. That has been a burden on my shoulders for the last, since 2008. So what's the fucking year? 15 years I've been concerned about all that shit. And today it's fucking done. I've been especially concerned about the last two years because I haven't paid one cent tax in the last two or three years. No, three years. So it's all cleared up now and I don't owe anything. It's fucking good shit. Good fucking shit. Anyway, that's good news for me. Let's move on to this week's Conspiracy Cop. Do do. Oh, that's not going to work. My voice is fucked. Anyway, so this week the Conspiracy Cop was basically sent in by a listener after he'd listened to the episode where I was endorsing Robert Kennedy Jr.'s presidency. I've endorsed it. <laughs> The boy owl in Australia has endorsed it. I've given him the stamp. That's the endorsement he's been waiting for. So I wake up after that episode and a listener has sent me a message saying, did you know that QAnon believe JFK Jr. was coming back? He faked his own death. I'm like, what? This sounds like a case for conspiracy cop. So, to be honest with you, I don't even really know what fucking QAnon is. So, fucking, I just jammed it into ChatGPT. I'm like, give me a fucking rundown of the QAnon conspiracy and what the fuck is going on with JFK Jr. And ChatGPT came back with this. It's not even ChatGPT, it's some other bullshit. The QAnon conspiracy theory is an extremely convoluted and baseless set of beliefs that posits that a powerful global elite composed of politicians, entertainers, and other influential figures is secretly running a child sex trafficking ring and other heinous crimes. So I'm like, yeah, I'm on board with that. That doesn't sound insane to me. Epstein's just the tip of the iceberg. And look at how many people were involved with Epstein. You're talking the Clintons. You're talking Bill Gates. You're talking fucking Kevin Spacey. You're talking Chris Rock, apparently. There's all sorts of names linked to fucking Epstein and no one's gone down for it. So what do you want us to believe, cunts? It's like an open secret. The public knows and the powers that be are trying to fucking avoid it. Anyway, so I'm on board with that part of it. And then... The next part is QAnon believers assert that Donald Trump was elected as president to take down this cabal and that they have inside information from someone inside the government working against the deep state known only as Q. Q sounds like he's just some fat kid living in his mum's basement. So that's QAnon. The problem seems to be with that conspiracy is... Like it's littered with some real shit, but then it just goes way out there and it muddies the waters for the shit that's actually true. You might like to call it a little bit of fucking disinformation. If this was 10, 12 years ago, I would have been on board with QAnon, but I'm too jaded a conspiracy theorist for that. So that's the QAnon part. As for the JFK Jr. angle... The QAnon conspiracy theory, it stems from the belief that JFK Jr. faked his own death in 1999 and has been living in secret ever since. QAnon believers assert that JFK Jr. is working with Trump to bring down this supposed deep state and that he will reveal himself to the world at a certain point in time. However, there is no evidence to support this claim. Conspiracies don't need evidence, you cunts. Evidence? I remember hearing about the Epstein shit three years before he got arrested. Cunts were like, where's the evidence? It's like, shut up, cunt. 
So they're saying there's no evidence to support <laughs> JFK Jr. faking his own death. And JFK Jr. actually died in the plane crash with his wife and her sister as well. And I fucking Googled JFK Jr. What a fucking handsome cunt he was. Jesus Christ, he was a fucking Kennedy. He was probably slinging the D as well. There's no way a cunt that looks like that is faking their own death. It's normally uggers that fake their own death. Who has actually successfully faked their own death and come back? Besides the movies and Hitler, is there anyone who <laughs> who's actually successfully faked their own death? I would like to do a Boyle Breaks history on that, actually. So, apparently, a year ago or something like that, JFK Jr. was meant to show up somewhere in Dallas. I think it was where his dad's head got blown off. Why the fuck would he want to go back there? And there was a big crowd of people waiting for him. And unfortunately, no JFK Jr. But that doesn't mean he's not out there somewhere. So, <laughs> this conspiracy, it's wild. For starters, I don't think Trump is out there trying to expose anyone. I mean, there's no one better in the world at calling people fat and ugly, like reporters, journalists, all that sort of shit. But I haven't seen any exposing anything from Trump. Secondly, I'm not entirely sure JFK Jr. is coming out of hiding from his fake death to help Trump. He could come out and help his cousin, Robert Kennedy Jr. That would be the way to go. It's a pretty wild conspiracy. This is how I feel about it. Hunji and Ten, there's a deep state. Hunji and Ten, fucking high-level politicians, famous entertainers business people, fucking what have you, are in some fucking dirty, dirty waters, whether it's fucking child sex trafficking, covert wars, psyops, that's all on the table. You don't need JFK Jr.'s fake death and his reemergence. He wasn't even a political figure either. <laughs> he was a lawyer who started a fucking magazine called George. Anyway, forget about it. Start listening to a little bit of Robert Kennedy Jr. He's going to be the guy. The least fucked up guy, anyway. So that's it. Conspiracy cop, QAnon, JFK Jr. Conspiracy, half confirmed. That'll do for tonight. If you're enjoying the podcast, give it a share around and I'll see you the fuck later. <laughs>